I'm going to be a guide this afternoon. I'll take you around a bit some of the main rooms we've got here in the middle of the main stand. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping to start the tour off. Any mobile phone numbers you put them on to silence. We'll be around about the tour route today. Just keep those numbers handy. 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 Please stay close as we move to area to area. It's very easy to get lost, particularly all in the, the back corridors here at the stadium. So I'll try and give you enough time to see the things in the rooms, but as we go to move on, please come back with me as we move to the next area. There's not really any restrictions of photography. You can take pictures of everything and anything. The only thing we ask you not to do is take pictures or video record during the, the wee DVD that I'm about to put on. But as I say, if you've got any questions, feel free to give us a wee shout. If I don't know the answer, I'll just make something up and hope I get away with it. <laughs> So the next stop, folks, is going to be the visiting team change room. So if you want to come this way, we're going to make your way around. Visiting team change room. As you can see, the facilities aren't particularly bad when you come and play against Rangers here at Ibrooks. I can assure you we've been in much worse over the last couple of years in our travels around Scotland. Here at Ibrooks, we've got a UEFA five-star or elite stadium rate. It means that the top bracket of matches can be played here. Things like you know, European finals can be played here at Ibrooks. To get that rate, you've got to meet a lot of criteria. And one of them, or two of them, was to do with the dressing rooms. Your dressing rooms have to be a minimum size. They don't need to be the same size. You'll see that a bit later on when we go into the Rangers dressing room. It's a bit bigger in there. They do need to meet the minimum. The room, as you can see, is just big enough. It's not uh, much bigger than the minimum specification, but as I say, it does meet the, the minimum specs. This is a bit where the players get changed. We've got a shower room just through there, and then there's a room for the, the head coach staff and also the medical staff just next door. So there's quite a small area for that. Rangers get much more facilities over the, the home side end. <laughs> See here some of the tops of players that have played against Rangers here at Ibrox. More recently, we've had players like Beckham, Messi and Ronaldo have all sat in this room to get changed. But as you can see, some of the, the slightly older players that have played here. Graham Soon has played with Liverpool against Rangers when we opened the new Broomland, Copeland and German stands. And then down at the far end, you get Cruyff's top. Cruyff, as you know, one of the, the most talented footballers I've probably seen. Mostly known for his, his turn more than anything else. But he was playing against Rangers at Ajax in the very first European Super Cup final. At that time, I had a two-legged affair played here at Ibrox and also over in Holland. He only scored once, the defence did see it as a bit of an achievement, I only let them on the score sheet once. We did get beat home and away though. As I say, we did play against Ajax in the very first European Super Cup final. Now apart from the size difference between here and the Rangers dressing room, there are various other things that happen specifically to the visit team in here. You'll notice when we go into the Rangers dressing room later on, the coat hooks are about six inches further up the wall in here than they are in the Rangers one. It means the visiting side have to reach higher up to get their jerseys and they know they're playing a bigger side when they come to Ibrox. Mind games are really important in modern football, that's just one of the things that happens. This change room is also closer to the tunnel. When a match day, it means the visiting team get there first, they've got to stand and wait for Rangers to make their arrival. If it's the first time they've played here, <coughs> pardon me, it's very intimidating standing down in that tunnel area with the noise of the support from right up the tunnel towards you. So if you want to grab some pictures here in the away dressing room, you're more than welcome to do so. You can re-look into the shower room if you want. In a minute or two, we're going to start to make our way up the stairs and towards the blue room.
some exceptions to those standard rules. The first four names in the far end was the four boys that found these Rangers. The club for all the right today get their space at the very start because without them, the thing you see around about you probably wouldn't be here today. And there's a painting they found us at the bottom of the hall. You see the four boys by right in the background, the four founders of this great club. And the man at the other side, Tom Valls, the club's first captain. And a lot of people do so I consider him as one of the founders as well. Fifth founder if you like, well he's worked in the early years of Rangers. The other painting here in the hallways at this end, that's Alan Morton, the wee blue devil was his nickname. But believe it or not, it's a life size portrait of the man. Bring it down, make sure his boots on the ground, that's all the height he was. He's only about five foot four. And certainly not one of the tallest boys to have played here, but definitely one of the most talented and one of the quickest of the ball in his feet. Now, the first return of the stairs, you probably noticed them on your way up to the Buster Bill Street, as I said a wee bit earlier on, arguably the club's greatest manager. The right thing he's sitting there watching over the front door of the stadium, making sure players were properly dressed. In his day, he started off the, the player dress code, and that's something that carries on to this day. He said all those years ago that players had to be properly dressed, wearing a shirt and tie, a blazer, a bowler hat, to be cleanly shaven with short hair. And since then, the dress code has changed quite a lot, but as I say, it is still in place, and it's still Mr. Swift's punishment that's used for players that are not properly dressed. So on a match day, somebody there to check the players, either when they come in the front door, or sometimes they would come up the tunnel, or somebody there to check them, make sure they've adhered to the club's instructions. If they're not properly dressed, they're not allowed inside the stadium. They'll be stopped, they'll be sent home and told to get changed, and they're not eligible for selection that day, simply because they weren't properly dressed when they come in the first time. That's something a lot of people think is quite old-fashioned, quite harsh. It's not really happened a lot in recent times because players just sort of get on with it. The last man that was sent home for not being properly dressed was Stuart McCall. When he played here, he came in not properly dressed, no excuse, he was sent home. The police wouldn't really believe who he was when he came back to the stadium and he wasn't allowed actually back into the front of the stadium for well into the first half. He wouldn't have been able to play that day, but he wouldn't have been picked anyway. So if you want to grab some pictures of the Hall of Fame on the paintings, you've not already done so, feel free to get them just now. Our next stop's going to be the director's box. So once you're ready, if you want to start coming round this way, I'm going to make your way through the door behind me and up into the director's box itself. So the set for my legs, you can take it sent or you can get paid a great to look. No, the green is the top, that's the green. I'm sending on it. seats in our director's box and usually it's pretty full on a match day. You've got the Rangers directors, the visiting team get an allocation down here at the front and after that there's invited guests to the club. And many famous people have taken up an invite to sit in here. Everybody from Margaret Thatcher to Frank Sinatra, Buffalo Bill the rodeo performer was here on more than one occasion and more recently he was like a bit of viral, Aaron McDonald and a lot of the Team Scotland medalists from the Commonwealth Games last year have all been in the director's box at different times. Now to say it usually is quite busy, but some of these seats are reserved for special people. If they are sitting somewhere else or if they're not at the game, the seats usually left empty for them in case they were the ones to take up at some later stage. As you up in the back door of the stairs there, the seat just behind you, that's the chairman's seat. Traditionally, Chairman Arranger will sit in that back corner, and the seat just next to it is reserved for 007. Sean Connery was friends with David Murray, when he came to football, that's where he sat. So we like to think James Bond's got a seat reserved for him at Ibrox should he wish to attend a Rangers game at any stage. 
Now the second back row this time you'll see is much shorter than all the rest of them. There's only three seats there, and that's just reserved for the management team. Number three, the one at the end is the manager seat. There's room just next to him for his assistant manager, his first team coach. Should these people be badly behaving in the touchline, they're sent to the stand. That's where they have to go to go and sit. But there's usually somebody sitting in that row of seats. You can imagine from the touchline, it can be difficult to see everything that happens in the park. There's somebody there watching the game. The idea is they get a better idea of the shape of the team and phone down any messages they want to pass on to the dugout. There's a dedicated phone line from those seats down to the dugout. That includes the camera locations up around the stadium. There's 36 of those. Four of them are just above our heads. That blue bit is not the top deck. It's top here the big stand. There's a camera deck for that particular level. Quite similar, this one, there's no barriers in front. The seats move side to side. Apart from the height, there's one big difference to that one. When the bouncy happens, the top deck, it goes up and down the way about two feet. And that's the move at the stadium. It was designed that way to sort of absorb the energy of the supporters. So when people just walk in and out, and go up to six inches. You're watching a game in the telly complaining about the quality of the camera man. Please folks spare a dog to the guy that's strapped into his seat up here. <laughs> and the stadium's going anywhere from six inches to two feet up down the way around about. Now looking across the pitch, you can see a couple of these wee light signs. That's a photosynthesis machine. It's effectively a big sunbed. It's artificial heat light onto the grass. It helps the crow back, particularly during the winter months, we're not getting a lot of sunlight hitting it. We do need them all year round to the eyes, it's purely because of the roof of the top deck. When they put that up, we didn't realise how much the grass that was shade. So about a third of the pitch in this time doesn't really get any sunlight at all. So we've got enough of these lights to spread out, cover touchline to touchline, and the pitch that doesn't get any sunlight. Makes the grass at this time grow at the same speed as the grass over there in the park. So if you want any pictures across the pitch, down to the front steps is the best place to get them from. Our next stop's going to be the Members Club. He's the Members Club, he's just going to be the Director's Box here. They're most sought after in hospitality. You can't buy a seat in the Director's Box, that's an invitation only. You can get one of these ones just outside of. Your name's got on it, you've got it for a full year, and you also get access to the Members Club as soon as you want to sit in. So when you're ready, once you get your clothes, if you want to start coming this way, you make your way down into the Members Club. What does it say there? sought after yeah. hospitality is weeks and it is bought on a season to season basis. I'm going to go any further, do we have any members with us today? Please. No, that means we can talk about them a wee bit more that <laughs> time. So in the members club, you can come in here about an hour or so before the game takes place, during the match itself at any point, and for at least two hours after the game as well. So you get quite a, a decent length of time. If you find it particularly cold and wet in the match day, you will see most of the members in here. The game's played in the streams that are in about the streets, so you can stay warm or something to eat something to drink when they're in here watching the game. In the match day, you also get the privilege of coming in through the front door and up the marble staircase to get to your seat, which is there for quite a small number of people that are match day itself. If you are interested in taking one of these seats, the waiting list has went down a wee bit over the recent years, but we do still have about a, a year's waiting list to come into the members club. A seat in here this year, don't know the exact figure, but we're talking in the region of about five and a half thousand pounds. For that one, you do get a free match day programme when you come in. That's three pound a game you make back your ticket price. <laughs> it's not all bad news when you're in here. Champagne reception at the door, free buffet and a free bar. So depending on how much you eat and drink, you can make the money back there really quickly. Some members do see that they'll have a personal challenge to make it back quicker than they did last year. Before anybody asks any sort of questions, there is a price menu at the bar. That's because the room is hired out for other functions as well. That's not for the members. They get their drinks here, they are not in here. Now, to give this room its full name, the members club model sheet. A lot of the things you see in here are too fully oral, either as a player, manager, or director. One exception is the yellow top in the corner. That belongs to former Rangers of Scotland goalkeeper Bobby Brown. It's one of his own Scotland goalie calls. The other three jerseys do belong to Willie Waddle himself, the Sharks of Scotland, the Lights of the Rangers, and then the pink and yellow top is most famous for the country. That's the horse racing colours of Lord Rosebury, a big Scottish supporter, who gave us some credit for making his use of Scottish colours when they're playing teams like Fran Sicily and he had to use their top. Now, of all the pictures you see in this room, the two most prestigious are probably just over to the right hand side in the, the alcove. 
you just about to sell from Billy Wardle, one of the world's great footballer, Belly. Unfortunately, it wasn't Simon Cox, it was just a meeting you had with a player from Brazil over in Europe playing a, some friendly games. And just next to that is Willie Wardle being presented to the Queen. It's Prince Philip. You get a chance, read the inscription underneath the one with the Queen in it. You see the guy that did the introductions at that meeting, he either had a good sense of humour or supported a different team. Probably a wee bit of both, but he told a white lie about Willie Waddle and when he refused to shake the Queen's hand at the first time of last game. So if you want to look around about the room, folks, you can grab some pics of the bits and pieces. In a minute or two, we're going to take you around to the trophy room. Mm. We distinguish between the different players and the different sides. Some bright spark then came up with the idea of wearing different coloured tops with numbers on the back of them, and the caps became sentimental value only. So they're mostly Scottish ones out here. We do have some English and some Northern Irish ones. And there are a few pretty rare Rangers caps that were given out for a short time to players that achieved something particularly special when they were playing with Rangers. So you will see a couple of the Rangers caps that you won't really see anywhere else. International caps you might see in various other venues, but I say the Rangers caps are pretty unique to Ibrox. So if you want to come this way, we'll make our way out to the trophy room. Starting down at this bottom wall, just because it's one of my personal favourites. Particularly special for me lies each one of those that Scotland flags represent one year when Rangers were the top side in Scottish football. The big picture in the middle there, that's Mr. Stroop. He was responsible for a great number of those titles. <coughs> and just at the bottom right hand corner of his picture frame, the flag there's a wee bit different from all the rest of them. That's got gold on it instead of white, and it was presented to Rangers for winning the league for the 50th time. At that time, a world first. There's only one other team to reach that milestone, and that's Linfield over Northern Ireland. They're catching up on us a wee bit. They've got 51 league titles and 51 Irish leagues. So they are catching, as I say, but they've still got the world record of 54 domestic titles. Now, the four underneath Mr. Stroud's quite an unusual thing because he kept in a trophy room. That bike was given to us by San Etienne. They played against him in 1975. It just so happened at that time here, Oda also owned the Crown's Bike Factory, and that was the gift that he was to give us when he played against them. You maybe know it's tradition for the two teams to swap gifts when they play in European football or some sort of win-off cup competitions, things like that. Most teams will give you maybe a vase or a bit of silverware, other teams will give you slightly more unique gifts. 
for example, being the, the vice leader at the end. Now, in the wall facing me there, there's a complete set of Walter Smith's nine in a row medals, along with pictures of each of the different teams that won each of those different leagues. The cabinet just in front of it is the Champions League cabinet, fairly self explanatory, all those gifts came from the Champions League tournament. And then coming to this side, we'll get the other European cabinet, as we lovingly call it. The gifts from the Champions League, from the UEFA Cup, from European friendlies, and there are various exceptions to rule in here as well. The bottom of this case is a golden boot, and that belongs to Chris Boyd. Chris got that for becoming the SPL's all time top goal scorer. Just at the end of 2009, he scored five goals in the one match. That took him past Henrik Larsson's record. And at the next game, he was presented the golden boot to mark his achievement, as I say, become the, the top goal scorer in the league's history. And then coming up to this end of the case, something that's more Scottish football in history rather than Rangers football in history. I see the Scotland top that Jim Baxter wore on the occasion of Scotland becoming the unofficial champions of the world. In 1967, we beat England in Wembley. He did the keep you up in the halfway line, and that is the top that he wore on that occasion. It's something that is very, very special, not only to Rangers, but also to the, the whole of Scottish football in history. Now, coming up to the other side of me, folks, is the testimonial and centenary cabinet. So that's got gifts from Rangers' 100th birthday and from to, to and from players from playing their testimonial matches. But again, various exceptions to the rule in this case as well. Down at this bottom end, you'll see a couple of small trophies that have busted the Rangers shirt. And that's the trophies that players get when they're inducted into the Hall of Fame here at Ibrooks. In between them, you see the Sam English Rose Bowl, made to commemorate Sam English. One of the club's great strikers, he scored 44 goals in 35 league games, more than one a match in the 1931-32 the season. It's the best return we've had from any striker in the league. Made to commemorate, as I say, so there's 44 silver balls in there, one for each of the goals that he scored. It does double up as a trophy, though. It's presented every year at the Play of the Year Awards. The top goal scorer at the club is presented the Sam English Rose Bowl. He's his picture taken with it, it comes back here, and it's another wee trophy to take home to his personal collection. Now the big set of medals towards the middle of this case, those belong to Richard Goff. It's almost a complete set of his medals. You might notice that there's one missing from the bottom row, and that's because it's an FA Cup runners-up medal. It had absolutely nothing to do with Rangers. He won it when he was playing with Tottenham Hotspur. We only had it because we had his full set. When Tottenham opened up their museum and they asked him for a bit of memorabilia, he decided to take this medal from here and hand it in down south. It makes more sense for it to be down there. But as I say, it is almost a complete set of all these medals. And at the top end of this case, there's another golden boot, and that one belongs to Ali McCoyce. It's one of his two for being Europe's top goal scorer, with the other one being kept at the National Museum of Football at Hamden Stadium. And as we move across to the other side of the room, that's the real trophy cabinet here in the trophy room. The one right in the very middle with red, white and blue ribbons on it is the, the League One, the old Division Two title that Rangers picked up at the end of last season. And then coming down to the right-hand side as I'm looking at it is the European Cup Winners' Cup from 1972. At the very end of this case, looking sort of down the room towards the right-hand side, you'll see the SFA Youth Cup. Highlights that this room isn't just for the first team. Any youth teams can get their trophies put in the, the trophy room at Ibrooks, but you do tend to find that many of the youth teams keep their trophies at Murray Park. It's easier for the teams to see them there, get their friends or family in to see them. But if they want, they can get their trophies displayed here in the, the trophy room within the main stand at Ibrooks. Now, one of the most uh, special trophies you'll see in there, in fact, the oldest trophy you'll see in this trophy room, is a small goblet just next to the number nine. The number nine was for nine in a row, and you see a small goblet just to the, the right-hand side of that. That was won by Moses McNeil when he entered the Gaelic Sports Half Mile Race. He put his running team as Rangers Football Club. When he won the race in a roundabout sort of way, that was the first trophy that the Rangers had ever won, a few years before he went on to win the, the Glasgow Charity Cup. So who was to know was to go from that very first trophy to become, as I say, one of the most successful sporting institutions in the world. Now, if we move up towards the, the top end of the room, We've got a lot of European gifts again in the top couple of cases, mostly badges at this side of the room. Over on that side, a lot of glass and crystals, quite a typical gift to get from top to the again from the Bureau. I think the most impressive thing you see in this case is the view of Walter Smith, you can see looking down the room. That 3D picture of Walter was given to him with a land of Rangers supporters club and the days of him retired on top of the second side. And if there is a place to pick this look at from the different sides, do tell us the 3D picture of Walter, because they are quite a bit the most impressive. And just around the corner is Mr. Bill Street. So actually, the top two greatest riders sit together here on this cabinet. So the other side again, a lot of bags down there, mostly for ceramics, but one that's in all, and then the black bag at the top end. That's the one for gold. I'm trying to get that. I'm giving to his captain. He's got a big mind in the area of gold. He follows it in grey, but he follows it around. Probably the most famous gift you see in this case is the wee cup. Three handled cups next to the, the 
and we're most trying to shoot by many elections. That's the view of the fans of the point of the point of Hamden, the point of Chelsea, the point of Stoke and Park. Where it's meant to start the beginning of the world. It's a great thing. 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 It's a great th
place of all right. Thank you. 